Tips and techniques for working with particles. Using the points class. Particles can add real eye candy to a project. You can use them for a dramatic reveal of something, a magic wand effect, a fire, smoke, snowflakes, you name it, particles are often the answer. In this section we're going to work through five lessons on particles that will take you from a particles novice to a particles expert. Well, at least you'll be on your way to being an expert. You know the drill by now. Shoot over to this address for the starting template for this video. Here we have a super simple scene. Just a scene, camera, renderer and orbit controls instance. If you slide down you'll see that a shader material instance is set using the uniforms object that just contains the time variable and vertex and fragment shader strings. More about these in a moment. So far though the renderer has nothing to render. Let's fix that. Enter const count equals 100. Const positions equals new float32 array count times 3. Const geometry equals new 3 dot buffer geometry. Const size equals 20. For let i equals 0, i less than positions dot length, i plus plus, positions i equal math.random minus 0.5 times size. Geometry, set attribute, position, new, 3 dot buffer attribute, positions, 3. Mesh equals new 3 dot points, geometry, material. Scene dot add, mesh. Now you have a cluster of small white squares. They're actually 6 pixels wide and high. Let's look at the V shader string at the start of the code. Because we're using the three points class, we're going to be drawing just the vertices of a mesh, not the actual faces. Because of this, it is essential that we set the WebGL property GL underscore point size. This is simply a pixel size in the X and Y directions. A point will always face the camera. It has no inherent perspective. You could adjust the perspective by altering the GL underscore point size property using the distance from the camera as a scaling factor. We'll see how we can use 3GS code to look after that in the next video. Now we have some particles to see. Let's play around with them. We'll add a velocity attribute to the buffer geometry instance. Add const velocity equals new float32 array count times 3. Then const speed equals 28. And in the for loop add velocity i equals math.random minus 0.5 times speed. Finally, add this attribute to the geometry by including geometry set attribute velocity new 3 buffer attribute velocity 3. Your V shader can now access a velocity vec3 value for each vertex. In the V shader code add attribute vec3 velocity. Then in the main function add vec3 val equal velocity times u time. And add this to the position plus val. Now your particles are starting to come to life. To ensure they all start from the origin set size to zero. Before we finish this video, let's add some gravity. If something is traveling at velocity v and an acceleration force A is applied continuously, then its position at time t will be pos equals position plus vt plus half at squared. You might remember this from school. You might well have thought, I'll never need to use that. How wrong you were. In the uniforms, add u underscore gravity value new 3 vector 3 0 minus 10 0. Gravity is an acceleration force in the negative y axis and in the v shader add uniform vec 3 u underscore gravity. In the main function add vec 3 acc equals u gravity times 0 0.5 times u time times u time. Now you can also add ACC to the position, 
plus ACC. And now, as well as shooting out, your particles drop with gravity as time advances. You've learned how to create a random cluster of points, how to use GLSL shader code to position these, and how your fragment shader will shade a GL point size block of colour. Great work! But white squares are hardly likely to be confused as fire, smoke or magic.